Coming up next is the Pro Wrestling Report Interactive. It's all about your emails and some new announcements as to how you can interact with us even further. The Pro Wrestling Report Interactive is on the air right now. Number one since 1998 on television, ESPN Radio and the World Wide Web, this is the Pro Wrestling Report with your host, the man they call Meathead, Frank Cosentino, and Damian Nelson. Professional wrestling news, opinion, and information from fans for fans. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Pro Wrestling Report Interactive. Uh, today is Wednesday. Hell, it's November already. Movember. No, November. Movember. Damian Nelson sitting alongside the man they call Meathead and uh, coming off the heels of last week's very uh, informative Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time talking about Hulk Hogan returning to and professional Hulk wrestling, Hogan. including uh, going to TNA Wrestling. Uh, we've got some emails from a lot of you all over the world. And if you want to be a part of this program, you have several options, actually. The first of which is to email us at comments at pwrshow.com. Comments at pwrshow.com. You can find all that information at our website, pro, uh, pwrshow.com. You can also, we're going to be taking video submissions, meet at. If you want to be a part of this program, you can go wait ahead and minute, uh, upload a, a video minute, and minute, send us the link to grab that video. We'll respond to your question right here on this very program. I'm a little nervous about people sending videos. I've once had women sending me videos. That will be just very that uncomfortable. No need it's to an worry awkward, about that. It's an awkward you know, situation. I, I'm what very if she sent you a video of her pie? Caramel? Her caramel. Uh, David Octavius Hero and the Kaz, uh, just not here, so we'll just go with that. <laughs> Let's get right down to it, though, Meathead. Our first email comes from Larry Bavley. Larry comes from Brookline, Massachusetts, and he says this. I see WWE Raw finally moving from recycled matchups to fresh ones and newer talent. It looks as if, it looks like Kofi, what happened to your accent, Kingston, may feud with Randy Orton. There's the All About Eve matchup with Jack Thwagger and The Miz. Sheamus, you can't see me in the white room, has debuted and seems to be getting a big push as well. Do you see new and promising trends emerging on Raw? You know, I'm kind of happy about uh, what happened. We didn't get a chance to talk about it on the last edition of the uh, Pro Wrestling Report on ESPN Radio because of all the Hulk Hogan news. But uh, I'm very happy with what's going on with Kofi Kingston right now. Um, drop the accent. And he got to talk. I mean, we heard him talk for more than five seconds. It reminds me back of the day when RVD finally started talking in WWE. Remember, instead of being the, <laughs> whoa, you know, the stoner guy, he started to talk, and he started to cut promos. That was fresh and new to me. Kofi Kingston, um, apparently not smart enough to know that he busted out the windshield. You probably don't want to step on the windshield afterwards. Hey, he recovered very well. Possibly, but he could also have had a Goldberg incident. No, only Goldberg can... Then again, that was plexiglass, by the way. Tear an it artery. Wasn't real, it wasn't real glass. It was glass. Huh? On the limo? Yeah. Yeah, that was glass. <laughs> uh, I think over the last two weeks we've saw, we've seen some incredible character development on Raw. And I'm very happy with it. I was very happy. I have been very happy with what they've done with Kofi Kingston over the last two Mark weeks. Mark the tape, by the way. Damien happy with WWE. I've been happy with WWE several times. I know, Mark but I'm, the, the tapes. I'm, I'm not doing it for me. I'm doing it for you. Uh, yes, I do see new and promising trends emerging on Raw, and I am excited for it. Let's go on to our next emailer. Jason sends this in. Uh, big fan, been watching all the shows on YouTube, and now a subscriber. Thank you very much for subscribing, Jason, and you can join our over 7,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Get instant notification when new episodes of the Pro Wrestling Report are available. And don't forget also to subscribe on iTunes and on uh, both audio and video podcasts available on iTunes, and uh, you can pick up last night's ESPN radio show on iTunes right now. We fixed those technical difficulties. Brand new building, nice new uh, studio. Uh, I'm, not, ESPN I'm, studios I'm in wondering Milwaukee. why they have the shower stalls there. I mean, are there people living in studio now? Well, they've had several conversations with you about your... Uh, no, 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 no. Dude, smell me through the camera. I'm so fresh and so Ooh, clean, clean. Says, good thing we don't have smell of vision Yeah. So fresh and so clean, clean. Name the event anyone out there in TV land. Uh, Jason says, in my opinion, the definite way for the WWE to be more successful is to stop the brand roster and have everyone now fight on all shows. The separation of the roster just downplays the superstars, and WWE World Heavyweight title seems to be a here-it's-your-turn thing, and is also breaking up the brands 
And also, breaking up the brands splits up the tag teams. We've had, we've had brand discussions many a time on this program, how right. ultimately it is successful for WWE, but not in Jason's opinion. Uh, the hot potato thing with the title is just a recent development over the who's last the year. World, who's the WWE champion right now? Right now? The guy you can't see. The guy you can't see. But uh, the World Heavyweight title, it's uh, again, it's the hot potato thing is just a recent hot development. Hot potato, hot potato. I did that for you. Hot potato, hot potato. As long as it's not peanut butter jelly time. Uh, Batista had a long run. Edge had a long run. I mean, you know, again, it's just, over, it's just over the last year that, you know, we've done the hot potato type deal where there's only been two to three month runs. You know, and well, that's what they were doing in the uh, Attitude Era as far as, you know, with the title. Austin would have it for a little bit, then Trips would what? have it, then Mick Foley, then Undertaker. Then but here's a different thing around. about that. You look at a Ric Flair with 16 title reigns, I believe it is. You look at uh, Kurt Angle at 13. with 13, uh, Triple H with 13, Orton or Cena, one of them 7 or 9, if not uh, Edge is around 6 or 7 right but now. But you look at how long those reigns went. You look at Hogan pretty much uh, getting a lot of those reigns between 1984 and 2006. Uh, which is, you know, some 12 years. You're talking about and Flair or Hogan? Because you I, never I'm, mentioned Hogan. I know, I'm talking about okay. Hogan now. You look at Flair okay. somewhere from the late 70s all the way up through uh, the middle of this particular decade. Sure. The reigns just aren't long enough to be substantial. The titles have become somewhat of a joke, uh, whereas they just aren't as coveted. But I think the title right now, or the title for the last several months, WWE title specifically, has been secondary to the feud between Randy Orton and John Cena because it hasn't been about the title. They haven't talked about it being about the t for the title. It's been personal. That's if there is a title matchup, I mean, that's not necessarily if true. If there is a title matchup, no, no, it should be about a title, the title. No, when there's a title change, I want my title back. Is the first phrase uttered out of the loser in passing? No, that's the first thing uttered by that person no. when they come Disagree. back. No, on that, if it happens on a pay per view, that next Monday Night Raw, I want my title back or title shot. That's the certainly this, uh, it was disagreed. mentioned, but it got no emphasis. Uh, Jason, I think the brand separation, I, I too liken to the days of Sunday Night Heat, a show that meant something at one point, uh, SmackDown and Raw, all being seamlessly transitional shows between each other. You know, the storylines kept going, kept people more interested. However, here's what you don't have when you don't have a brand extension. ECW, the younger talents coming up. Uh, no, you that's don't not have true, the opportunity. because you had that on Sunday Night Heat. That's no. not true. You had that no, on you Shotgun not Saturday Not when Vince McMahon was calling The Undertaker and Kane putrid. <clears throat> No, you had that on Shotgun Saturday Night. That's where you had that on, you know, you you had that place for the younger talent. No, not at all. Not to the degree that you have ECW and maybe that's right the problem. Now. And maybe that's the problem that we have now is because they're giving too many younger talents a chance. And a lot of them are just... <gasps> like? I don't know. How about... Um, uh, nothing Tyler Riggs? We can say Tyler Riggs. Sure. Uh, nothing against Mike Knox, but Mike Knox is a young talent, and he's kind of just... Eh. I mean, his beard is the most, you know... Substantial thing about him. You I'm could say, the same, you could say the same thing about Shelton Benjamin. If not for the brand extension, would you care about that? Would that guy get any TV time at all? Nobody would care about him, and he wouldn't be in the company. Not, 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 not going to work here anymore. Thank you, Jason, for that email. Let's move on now to Tommy G, who sends us in a uh, question. Is it more important to have great charisma and mic skills and have average re in ring wrestling skills? Or great wrestling skills and bad or average mic skills and charisma. Basically, Say it again, is it, because that was a is it better? Cool. Tommy's asking, is it better to be a wrestler, a great wrestler with bad mic skills and lack of charisma, or is it better to be a wrestler with not so much talent but better on the entertaining aspect of things? Depends on what we're looking for, and I'm going to assume you're looking Just for. Uh, hold on, I assume you're looking for the person who sells the most tickets. That's the most uh, asses in the seats. Puts the most asses in the seats. I'll use Hulk Hogan as an example. A below average to average wrestler. I mean, he could wrestle back in the day, but he was entertaining on the microphone. Entertaining and people bought into him. You don't have to be a great physical wrestler, a great wrestling talent to get over. Again, we use the term getting over. The best thing you want is actually to be able to interact with the fans. Get the fans to care about what you do and where you are at all times. If you get them to care about you, to be emotionally invested in you, then you're going to put asses in the seats. When you look at the successes in the business, the big successes in the business, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, The Rock, uh, Randy Orton, John Cena, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, they had it all. So the answer, in my opinion, is you need to have it all. Otherwise, you're going to be John Cena uh, doesn't have it all. 
John Cena has the ability to wrestle in some very good matches, as he did at Brand New Rights. More, he has more ring psychology because basically... Well, that's good. He, but that doesn't mean he has it all. Where's his ability to do every move that a normal wrestler can do? Well, if you look at the list of names I just ran down, they're not comparative, comparative to each other. So th they are in the way you're bringing them up, as in they all have them all, is what you said. Now, what I'm saying is they, they have They had wrestling all. ability, they had charisma, they had mic skills. They have it all. Okay. But all would be a I didn't say they were the greatest wrestlers. All would be a technical prowess. That's also, a, that's part of the I five tools. But that's part of the tools. If you have it all, you have that as well. You if said I were they, talking about the great no, you wrestlers... you said they had that all, I but you're not even that. talking about a technical prowess. Because I didn't say that. That's part of all. No, in, in, in the context you're speaking, but not the context... If we're I'm talking speaking. about an athlete, for example, a five-tool we athlete, as an example, like a five-tool athlete in baseball, they have it all. A, a five-star athlete, a five-tool athlete, would have all five of those tools. But according to your logic, if he had four to five, he has it all. I answered that the question no that Tommy G sent in. Next. Thank you very much for that email, Tommy G. Uh, let's move on to Sam Sabari. Sabari sends in the next email. What do you guys think about Kofi Kingston's push? Well, we'll reference what we said earlier, at least as it pertains to me. Um, you know, it's, I think it's good. I think Kofi, again, I said weeks ago, dropping the Jamaican gimmick gave him a lot more ability to be more mainstream uh, popular, more popular in a mainstream fashion. Uh, Dave Harrow has been trying to convince me that Kofi Kingston will never peak above where he is now. We'll see what happens over the course of the next well, few weeks. Well, when Dave Hero said that, David Octavius Hero, Kofi's actually peaked above that already. So it's kind of like selling a stock too low. Christopher Ely sends this in. Uh, I think you guys should do a top 10 face slash heel turns. Why do we feel like we did that? We did. It was in 10 best. Anyways, uh, I'd say the number one heel turn of all time has to be Hogan's. If, for nothing else, the amount of crap that got pelted in the ring prior. For face turns, I'd have to go with Austin, which in turn saw the heel turn of Bret Hart. Yeah, but see, a heel turn can happen momentarily. Does a face turn really happen at the drop of a hat? I can't think of an abrupt one. You know, an abrupt one. Yeah, that's what I'm getting. You can be heel abruptly, but I don't know if you could do that face-wise. You know, one of my favorite heel turns was when uh, Triple H pedigreed was it China or an X-Pac at WrestleMania 15, I think it was? I think it was X-Pac. Oh, some good stuff. Yeah, because then it was China and I was Triple randomly it was thinking. China. It was China and Triple H went off on their own together. I was randomly thinking about a random Raw in Milwaukee in 1999 when Me Triple too. H looked in the face of China and said, called her an ungrateful little bitch. That was one seemingly meant it. That was one we had, what, three, four times we heard, It's our time! Here comes trouble! We heard that song over and over. Because China wrestled that night for the chance at the title. Triple H wrestled. Mick Foley uh, wrestled that night, too. Yeah. I remember that. That was the night after Jericho debuted. Next email comes from Dubai. And it uh, comes from Abbas Nakvi, who says, First of all, I just want to say your show is the only entertaining wrestling-related program out there today, including all WWE and TNA product. You know what? I appreciate that, wow. but I think that's a bit of a stretch. So thank on you. the weeks that he's on. Uh, with that being oh. said, I believe WWE is not packaging their fresh breed of stars right. Breed. Just the names itself do not sound like names of superstars. For example, Dolph Ziggler, Sheamus, Drew McIntyre, and so on and so forth. The names lack power. I mean, can you imagine being pumped over some guy whose name is Dolph Ziggler? What about Kofi Kingston? That's royalty if you think about it. Uh, the Rock. I'm not sure anybody would have said he would have gotten as far as he did based off the name. Steve Austin. Stone Cold. Hulk Hogan. Right. Ric Flair. I mean, I, 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 sure. I, I appreciate your point. Val Venus. I appreciate your point, but I don't think it Gilbert. matters because what's going to matter is you're going to gravitate to the star and then you're going to know their name. Names certainly help, uh, but I don't think that they are as, as powerful as you may think. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for that email from Dubai. Let's go on now to David Hogan. David Hogan, we had one of the winners of tickets from the Pro Wrestling Reports at the TNA Live event ever seen just a couple of weeks ago. He says, when are they going to get rid of the raw guest hosts, or at least the guest hosts who aren't into the product? Kofi Johnson was the last straw for me. <laughs> it's not going away for a while. It is not going away. This is a way. i got to call you, though. This is a way, again. You know, kind of like guest hosts. 
kind of like Hogan being brought into TNA is supposed to give them that mass appeal, you know, that uh, pop culture appeal, that crossover appeal. That's what they're trying to do with the guest hosting. They're trying to get people from different walks of life to get, you know, if it's somebody from, say, Entertainment Tonight or Access Hollywood, now they're going to show the clips on Access Hollywood. If it's a sports star, like a you know MVP quarterback, they're going to show clips on Sports Center. If it's a movie star, you know that agent's going to have it on Access Hollywood, you know Inside Edition, whatever. That stuff is crossover stuff. That's what they're trying to do: is reach out the wrestling product to the people that aren't going to the wrestling product. Whether you like it or not, you're talking about it, and uh, it's created buzz in the wrestling business. Raw had some strong ratings last week, uh, and it gives them an opportunity to. Uh, you saw the commercials on USA. They're talking about it now. It's out there, and it certainly does not hurt the WWE brand in general. Uh, so I think we're going to see it continue for quite a while. Uh, why should they walk away from it? I mean, you're going to have the Kofi Johnstons. You're going to have the summer fests of the world. Uh, it's just going to happen. And then you're going to have, uh, you know, I'm sorry. Rock and roll. Why does Sharon have to be there? Sharon's actually just as popular as Oswald. Uh, thank you very much for that email, David. Uh, let's go now to an email from Martin Winter, who says... Uh, it's awfully cold out here. I'm sorry, that's a bad At joke. me. D despite you saying you won't watch uh, WWE bragging rights, I did watch it and was really impressed, mostly because of the Iron Man match. I don't know if you've seen it, but it was an impressive match by both competitors, and I really love to see Orton in the ring. He's so vicious and angry and lets his emotions go. In my opinion, one of the best wrestlers ever, and John Cena, was really good in this match as well. Although many don't like him, he worked an incredible match. Martin, I appreciate your points. Again, I did not say I was going to was not going to watch bragging rights. Said he wasn't going to pay for it. I was not going to pay for bragging rights. There's a distinct difference between those two things. You know what's a... Uh, can I shoot for a minute there? Can I, can I, um, can I get authorization, sure. Cal? Cal, can I shoot? Cal, Cal has authorized it. Good. We, a lot of people who are very interested in watching the program, including World Wrestling Entertainment, what are you doing? We're on national television and you're drinking. Uh, you're shooting. That's unprofessional. You're shooting. Go. Go. Read the description of the show. Read the title. Watch the entire program before you start lashing out. I got a lot of heat for saying, uh, or, uh, saying that uh, I wasn't going to watch WWE Bragging Rights. I never said that. I can understand how it may have been interpreted as such, which falls on me as a responsibility to make sure I more clearly communicate that. When I say I'm not going to buy a pay-per-view event, it means I am not going to purchase the event. I'm going to go and watch it somewhere for free using all available means. Available, uh, and legally. Well, I didn't necessarily say that. Well, we're saying that now so we don't get another cease and desist. No, they're working on horns while they uh, so yeah, I agree. Uh, great job, Orton. I've been on his. I've been on the Orton bandwagon for months, if not years, uh, saying how great he was and how great he could be. And uh, he is one man who he's typecast. Uh, I don't see how it could ever be anybody but the vicious character that he is right now. He can get out of it. It's wrestling. It's better than being typecast as kind of real. Um, the only thing that he's going to need though is he's going to need time away. He can't just go from one to the other. I mean, if he wants to come back as face, which he eventually will end up being, uh, he'll have to have an injury or somebody will have to attack him and then come back as a strong face and then, you know, revenge. Paul Harning, thank you very much for that email. Paul Horning from the Packers? I'm sorry, that was actually Martin Winter. The next email okay. comes from Paul Harney, uh -huh. uh, who wants to talk about bragging rights as well. I thought I would bring to your attention that John Cena has never been in an Iron Man match before bragging rights. The match between him and Shawn Michaels that you mentioned on PWR Primetime was from England in 2007 and was billed as a normal one-on-one -on -one match with, which had one fall that just happened to last almost an hour. And that one fall was by Shawn Michaels. That's why WWE kept saying Cena was never in an Iron Man match. I'll admit it. I was wrong. I was under the impression that that was an Iron Man match, and you are correct. It was not an Iron Man match. So my apologies for World Wrestling Entertainment for lashing out at them for lying to me. But they'll do it again soon. Uh, Bob in Tampa sends this in. Uh, every time I watch ECW, I get frustrated by WWE's lack of quality work for gold dust. Hmm. This guy does nothing but work his ass off in the ring. He's more over with the crowd than anyone else not named Christian on ECW. Every time he's working, the crowd always chants for gold dust. However, he never gets any love from the company. Recently, I enjoyed a series of matches with Sheamus 
And Gold, I thought Goldust did a lot of great work putting Seamus over. I thought he taught him a lot. Why can't we see him more involved? Better yet, why don't we see him team up with little brother Cody soon you know, after that's Legacy it's, breaks it's up? Funny, it's funny you bring that up because, you know, WWE technically is giving Goldust a love because, you know what, he's on TV almost every week and he's working. He's not just being, you know, some dork in the back. Granted, he's not winning matches, per se, or he's not going over on talent and getting pushed as Goldust the wrestler. He's the enhancement talent right now. He's the guy, and you're right, he did a good job working with Sheamus. You know, basically, Goldust was used to get Sheamus up to a, you know, next level. So, technically, WWE does show him love by letting him work, giving him a paycheck. Do you think Robin S. thinks that they show him love? Show me love. That's the wrong song. Uh, thank you very much for that email from Florida, Bob, in Tampa. Billy Bob Spooka sends this in. Uh, as all you know, as you all know, rather, TNA signed Nigel McGinnis and Travis Tomko. What's his name, Travis? That's his real name. Went by the name of Tyson Tomko. On several sites, there are reports of Tomko gloating over the chance to be in WWE. And McGinnis is only there because he failed the WWE pre-screening exam. My question is, don't you think it would be more beneficial in the long run to split and repackage talent like Jay, Jay Lethal and Consequences Creed? Because if greener pastures were to arise, it seems that McGinnis and Tomko would leave in a heartbeat. Uh, Billy Bob, great question. Uh, but there are so many different facets of that Nigel McGinnis story. It's, there's his version of the story. There's everyone else's version of the story. And somewhere in between is probably what really happened. But uh, he is in TNA. I don't think it's a bad thing, especially given the news that uh, came out last week with uh, the, the uh, new person in charge of TNA Wrestling, Hulk Hogan. Um, but uh, as it pertains to, you know, here's the thing. Nigel McGinnis said very publicly he was going to WWE basically for one reason, the money. And uh, whatever happened, happened. He's not in WWE, so he went to TNA. I don't fault him for it. He's making the best decision for himself, and they, as a company, decided to bring him on. People just can't get up and go. Uh, you know, they, they got a chance now with Nigel, and uh, they're going to go ahead and exercise that chance. Right, and he has a contract that he signed, so he won't well, just perhaps jump at the drop of a hat. But then again, we have seen TNA bring guys in on a per-appearance basis. Maybe Hogan already changed that. It's possible, because, I mean, you know, what was... Uh, uh, Rikishi's gimmick name when he was in TNA, what was Test's name? I mean, you know, these other guys that they brought in for a couple. Wasn't Al Snow in TNA? Not a minute. Joey from Hawaii sends this in about a while, uh, sorry, <laughs> a while ago, WWE, uh, actually we're not going to read that one because we haven't confirmed that, so he's going to be answering it. Sorry, Joey from Hawaii, but we'll go ahead and respond. Joey from Hawaii! We'll respond to Joey's email at pwrshow.com uh, with the dozens of other, other of you. We send in emails each week. We're not able to get to them all in the uh, time allotted to this program, so go ahead and check pwrshow.com for our responses to those. Uh, let's move on to Bill Bailey from Salt Lake City, Utah, who sends this in. Do you think they will reveal who suicide is? It seems like he is not over with the fans anymore, with, w with TNA trying to push younger talent. Would it not be better to push the person behind the mask, who at the time of his departure was more over with the fans than AJ Styles, Matt Morgan? And Hernandez. I think that's an arguable point. I have thoughts most. of who suicide is and who they should Suicide! What's well, Kaz? Could always be changed. Uh, I think Kaz is better off with suicide. I think that they could always make somebody else then. But well, they have. I'm, not, I'm just talking about the guy if who pulls the suit off the, fits. the guy. The guy who pulls off the mask at the end. Homicide. Garrett Gross from Greenville, Tennessee, sends this in. What do you think of the Shelton Benjamin face turn they seem to be building up? I'm enjoying the feud between Shelton and Sheamus. I think Sheamus could be a big star in the future, but I also think he needs a mouthpiece to get him over. If they could put a mouthpiece with Sheamus, who do you think it should be? Well, being it's WWE, it would be Finley. Can they use Coach? Not Coachman, but the original coach. You know, the great sweatsuit and the whistle. <laughs> this goes to the point, who is that exactly the question. 
they don't have managers anymore. Uh, for some reason, somehow, somewhere, it was determined that managers are no longer necessary in the wrestling business. I think it's an epic failure. The last manager that they truly brought out was Shelton's mama. Thea. Uh, and uh, it's just as a, as a forgotten and lost art. So who do I think it should be? Uh, you know, there are several great people out there who could still manage, and the latest person who we saw really elevate somebody to a prominent role in World Wrestling Entertainment was Paul Heyman with Brock Lesnar. Not necessarily true, because I thought of a guy whose name is Armando oh, Alejandro true. Estrada. Oh, Brock went. Brock Paul Heyman did it title. better than Armando sure. did. But Umaga made it to a title match at a pay-per-view, so that's pretty far. Uh, thank you for that email. Garrett Travis sends this in. AJ Styles is the current world champion in TNA, which is great for TNA since he was one of the originals. Who do you see taking the title from AJ and when? I'd like to see it be Matt Morgan. Hmm. But it's probably going to be Eric Young. Or Suicide. Or uh, ODB. Or uh, uh, Amazing probably, Red. Probably won't be ODB. Or Amazing Red. Uh, Travis. By the way, those were all joke answers. I think Matt and Morgan actually would be good. This is hypothetical. Hypothetical. It depends on what kind of feuds AJ gets into. We know coming up with the next pay per view, it's a three way routine between him and Samoa Joe and Daniels. Uh, Daniels. Um, Which doesn't make any sense because how did Daniels and Joe earn their spot there? I guess if they're looking to make a rematch of the you know amazing Ultimate X or the Unbreakable X 2005, yeah. I believe. The uh, X Division Championship match, but how did Daniels and Joe earn their spot to be in the title match? Thank you for that email, Travis. Let's go now to the United Kingdom, Nathan Grimshaw. Hey guys, love the show. I was just wondering, do you guys think Rey Mysterio will ever lose his mask? And why doesn't WWE consider ECW a real brand like Raw and SmackDown? They treat it like their bitch, to be quite honest with you. I mean, ECW didn't even get a chance for bragging rights. Tiffany, explain that. And what was the explanation, Damien, for the rest of us that haven't seen it? Next year, Braggy Rice, they'll have a much more prominent role. Was basically your Next year, we'll do it, we'll be better. Uh, look, ECW is doing what it needs to for WWE. Here's the thing. When you bring somebody up to either Raw or SmackDown, because they do view it that way, they've talked about it that way on the program, You do they want a larger audience for ECW? Yes, but also at the same time, they can take advantage of the fact that not as many people watch ECW, so they can try things. On ECW, try things with people. <laughs> exactly, and we've seen a lot of people make that graduation from ECW <laughs> on up. Without an ECW, you wouldn't have any familiarity with a lot of the new names they're trying to bring in, and you'd be complaining—not you specifically, but people in general would be complaining about these nobodies on Raw or SmackDown. So I think ECW is doing exactly what it should be doing, and as it pertains to Rey Mysterio's mask. I would have to check with uh, the airlines to see if they've ever lost his mask, because I think that's about the only way. I would works. actually have to check with the Booker man here, Dave Hero, because apparently he's got masks to sell to kids, so why would they take his mask off? Thank you, Nathan, from the UK. Our final email of the day comes from Tyler Bowers, who's from Vancouver, Washington. Uh, he says this, I haven't watched WWE Raw in months because I don't get it. Just put the word in it. I don't get it. Oh, I don't get it. Uh, yes, I was just wondering if Shane McMahon is really if Shane McMahon is really stepping down or if it's just an angle. All the evidence we have shows that he is truly stepping down as a publicly traded company. WWE has to be very careful when they make announcements as such. That announcement as him being an officer of the company, they have to they can't do it's a storyline with that. Sure. So he is indeed gone, and uh, you know the big rumor out there, which I don't all you believe have to go at back all. To, but hey, don't all say to, never say never. All you have to go back to is the Trump thing. They had to actually backtrack on mm -hmm. Vince McMahon selling Raw, and then to their shareholders, let them know this is just a storyline angle. Shane McMahon is going to be stepping down from the company on December 31st. This has been the Pro Wrestling Report Interactive. If you want your email read on air, be sure to send us an email to comments at pwrshow.com. Go to the Pro Wrestling Report website to do that. Emails with your name, your age, and your location. Go to the top of the line. Uh, many of the others are not even read. Uh, so that is how a lot of you have had questions on our YouTube channel as to how to get those questions to us, and that is how you do so. And uh, also, as we said at the top of the program, if you have a question you'd like to submit us via, uh, via video, you can go ahead and do so. Upload that video to Keep a video sharing on. site and go ahead and drop us an email as to where we can find it and we'll go ahead and try to roll it into this very program. Download last night's edition of the Pro Wrestling Report on 540 ESPN. Listen to it on the go. And uh, we will be back with a brand new edition of the Pro Wrestling Report Prime Time this Friday night, right after WWE SmackDown on television in Milwaukee yeah. and on demand at pwrshow.com.